everybody. I am back. Robin Rockline in the house. Um, not Elvis, Robin. Um, and I am going to teach you some of my tips and tricks for singing well. Um, good singing, some things that are problematic in a lot of my students. I teach students, um, I don't teach anybody that's under the age of 14. I have taught that in, in the past and it's not that I don't like children, I love children. Um, it's that they're not ready for the intense technique, technique type training. Usually children, they should be singing and loving music and learning songs and in choir. Um, and the older students that are going into high school are more ready and prepared and physically more developed so that I can talk to them about the things that I'm going to talk to you about today. So 14 through professionals. I have professionals that are in Montreal, LA, um, all over the state of Florida, Arizona. Um, I've lost track of some of them. They're all over. But they all do, I'll do like Skype lessons, not really Skype, more like FaceTime lessons. Um, I've tried Zoom lessons. That has not worked. But I have seen a lot of people via that way, especially recently. And um, I teach um, adults all the way up until their 80s. I've had some people that were in their 80s and that are just church singers, which um, they are phenomenal and they want to get better at what they do, like the rest of us. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is the first thing I want to talk to you about is what I look at, um, the first thing I check as a teacher with a student. So the first thing I'm going to check out is I'm going to look at their singing and I'm going to look at their alignment. Number one is alignment. What is alignment? Alignment is posture. Um, I was in Graz, Austria singing for the summer and I had a lesson with a teacher there that I don't normally study with. Um, and the first thing he said to me is like, we need to fix your alignment. I was like, what? What's wrong with my alignment? I'm a grad student. I'm awesome. What? <laughs> well, young people, we all think that we're awesome when we're not. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but what he basically said, why are your teachers not fixed your alignment? I said, I didn't know anything was wrong with my alignment. So what the deal was, was my head, w I was an actress before I became a singer. Um, and I was using my energy to go forward with the audience. I'm sure some of you have done this when you sing we sing like this. So you can see my alignment is really off. So he's like, first thing is I want you to make sure that your alignment is here. And the second thing is I would either reach or I would tuck, depending on if it was a high note or a low note. <laughs> okay, this, your jaw should just be floating between your clavicle, which are your, what are these, the collarbones, collarbones thank you. What's the <laughs> clavicle, this thing, the clavicle, these things, collarbones. Um, your head should be floating between the collarbones and the middle of your head right here. And it should be really loose and relaxed and floating. And your head should be just slightly tipped. This is perfect technique for singing when it comes to alignment. Okay? The other thing is I have a lot of singers, boys as well as um, girls, women as well as men, that have this thing called sway back. Do you see that? Sway back cuts off your arrow column in half. So what, they what we often have to do, especially women, most women, we have some type of just a little bit of sway back. We always have to tuck our hips. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm actually tucking my hips just a little bit. So that way my air column is free and I can breathe all the way through my back. Yes, you breathe all the way through your back. The muscles that we use when we breathe for singing are not just your lungs. <laughs> You use your abdominal muscles, the muscles of inspiration and muscles of expiration. The muscles of inspiration are your, um, we call it the rib meat when we eat dinner. It is your intercostals, your intercostals, your exterior and your interior, they're oblique intercostals and they contract to expand the lungs and as well as to deflate the lungs. Then your abdominal muscles, we have four sets of abdominal muscles. The muscles that we have, abdominal muscles, Anyone? What's one set? Obliques. Obliques. The obliques, I call them the butterfly muscles. They're at 90 degree angles. External, internal. Okay? The obliques. What's on the outside? What, what muscles are on the outside? Anybody know? No. Rectus abdominis. The rectus abdominis, a lot of people call it your core muscles. The six pack six pack, which is more like an eight pack, but it's, you know, um, those muscles are on the outside. They do this over the top, right? All the way across. 
we are really made amazingly. It's seriously intelligent design for sure. <laughs> because who would think this up? Nature? I don't know. Maybe. Um, <laughs> then we have what we call the transverse abdominis. The transverse abdominis are all the way on the inside next to your guts or your viscera. Okay? And the transverse abdominis go the other direction. So the ones on the outside, all right, the ones on the outside, the rectus abdominis or your core muscles, those help you stand up and stay erect. That's what we call rectus abdominis, rectus abdominis. They help you stand up. Then we've got the obliques in the middle. They're the sandwich. It's an oblique sandwich. And then on the inside, next to all the guts, are the transverse abdominis. These muscles on the inside, they move in this direction. Do you see this? They go this way. When they contract, they're contracting in this direction. What do you think they're for? So if the rectus abdominis are going this way and they're holding us erect, and these are doing this, all the way in the inside by our guts, there's a clue. Uh, they're, for, they're for defecating. Yes, they are, or having babies. Yes. So what happens to a singer if they do not have their air column? Wait a minute. These are the muscles that you use. What about these muscles? We forgot about those. Your back muscles. So your back muscles, you have your rib cage, right? In between here are more obliques. These are your, and your rib cage, of course, goes around on the front. This is your back, by the way, the back spine. Your rib cage, these are intercostals. These expand your lungs and help deflate your lungs, okay? In the back, we have these muscles along here that also help expand the trunk. The, they help expand the entire area. Those help you breathe, and they help you support your sound, okay? So these are back muscles that we use. These are the front muscles. What happens if we use the wrong muscles when we sing is you'll get... You're, um, it'll cause too much pressure in the body, and you'll get a throaty sound. I'm sure you've heard throaty sounds, people that sing from the throat, and they're like, uh, right? And they're working really hard, and you see this, uh, right? Um, neck muscles um, will start happening. The throatiness, we call it like a grab, I call it a gravelly sound, because to me it sounds like it's gravel in the throat. Um, if you're, those are if you're using the poop muscles. I hate to say that, but that's what they are, they're the poop muscles. Um, didn't know you were going to learn to sing, and we were going to talk about poop muscles. <laughs> but <laughs> got to use the right muscles to sing. Don't use those. There are many opera singers on the planet that I could tell you about <coughs> that use the wrong muscles and have to be changed at intermission. Oh, uh, it's a true story. Oh, yes. I, I've got stories. <laughs> and they bring their own dresser for that reason. No joke. So you don't want to use those muscles to sing. Not, God did not make us that way. God made us use the oblique muscles to sing. Now, if you use too much rectus abdominis, the ones on the outside, right? These are my dancers. I have a lot of dancers who do this. Because um, they'll zipper up this way because they think it should go this way instead of going down and out, right? Um, so they zipper up and then they get like a flutter because they have too much air pressure. That is too much airflow going up. They need to chill out chill out and use just the regulars. So what I use is I use lip trills and tongue trills so that people can feel what they need to sing, the exact amount of pressure that they need to sing. If you can't do a tongue trill, try the lip trill. If you can't do a lip trill, try the tongue trill. If you're in a choral warm-up like session and they're asking you to do one and you can't do one, do the other. It's the same thing, all right? One is a little more advanced than the other. The tongue trill is a little bit more advanced because it requires a lot more core. Um, the muscles working together and coordinating together, the core um, support that you need. I'm not talking core muscles, I'm talking about support system. Um, so, I, I'm just like, I'm not doing anything. I'm literally just using the amount of pressure that I need in order to make the, the phonation. Just the edge of my cords happening. You see, you hear how loud it is with very little effort. So those are the muscles that you want to sing with. Um, and that's what you're going to hear in people if they are having trouble with that. Uh, what else did I want to talk about? Ah, 
wait a minute, I thought you sang from your diaphragm. Sing from your diaphragm. Well, we know that you shouldn't sing from the throat, right? We all know that. That's like a normal thing. You don't sing from the throat. This is where you sing from. So, the diaphragm. Here's the back of the rib cage. There's rib attachment, rib attachment, spine. Um, here's the ribs in the front, okay? Um, this is your collarbone and your sternum. And the bottom of the sternum, you have a rib attachment, a rib attachment, and a rib attachment. What color should I use? This is fun. This is fun. Are you having fun? I'm having fun. Okay. So, flat as a pancake is when we've taken a, a normal breath. If we've taken a deep breath, that's what it is. This is six centimeters, if you really care. Six centimeters. 1.7 centimeters is the normal. Every day, we do it all day long. We don't think about it. That's your diaphragm doing the muscles of inspiration, muscles of expiration. 1.7 centimeters for a deep breath for singing. 1.6, I mean, six, six centimeters. All right, this is your diaphragm. Your diaphragm at rest is an upside down bowl. Your diaphragm really likes to watch TV, Netflix, eat bonbons, potato chips, drink a beer, and sit on the couch. It doesn't want to do anything ever. It wants to be in the resting position, hanging out. You have to make your diaphragm do stuff. And the way we do that is we contract all of our abdominal muscles in order to support the sound. What? Yes. Everybody take an exhale. I want everybody to exhale all the air out. <sighs> what do you want to do? You want to inhale, don't you? So let the vacuum happen. Let the air go in. All right? Now go <sighs> till it's all gone. Good. Let your body fill up with air. Now hold it. What does it want to do? Exhale. It wants to exhale because that darn diaphragm doesn't want to do its job. It doesn't want to stay flat as a pancake like it's supposed to. You can inhale it. Go ahead and breathe. Go ahead and breathe. <laughs> Okay, you see it wants to do nothing. The exhale is the diaphragm going, <laughs> I love Netflix, right, whatever. Okay, it doesn't want to do anything. You don't sing from the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a m part of the muscles of inspiration and muscles of expiration. You can't sing from it, but you can sing from here because the diaphragm either goes up or it goes down. It doesn't have any, you have no control over it except for these muscles are what give you, this is the control valve. This is what supports your sound. The muscles of your abdominal, um, your oblique abdominals, those are the ones that counteract specifically the internal, are, they're the ones who are pulling down and counteracting that diaphragm from going up. And that's the support that people are talking about. It's your abdominal muscles. The reason why people think it's your diaphragm is because we are a bilateral organism. So we're split in half. I know we didn't think about talking biology, but this is, this is how you sing. So we're split in half, okay? And so when we exhale, when everybody exhale again, and feel what your muscles are doing, I feel them on the side, right? Now exhale, inhale again. Some people feel it right here because it's, it's contracting in. They're feeling the contraction, and because we're a bilateral organism, it meets here, it knits together here, we knit together here. So that's why people feel it from the diaphragm. And the diaphragm sits right there, it sits in the same spot. So that's where the confusion lies. Does that make sense? So, that is the exact amount of air pressure and the correct muscles. You'll ne if you do an exhale on SH, you will never have the wrong muscles. But you have to sing like that too. That's why I highly recommend the lip trill and the tongue trill. Lip trill and the tongue trill. Four, warming up, what I do. I'm gonna do the tongue trill because um, the lip trill just doesn't do it for me anymore. <laughs> and you can gravitate towards one or the other. The goal of doing a tongue trill or a lip trill is to make it smooth. It helps with your placement and it helps warm up your trunk muscles. So it's as simple as this. I'll do start with the, the lip trill. Or, Tongue trill. Oh, tongue. It's like giving your, bro your brother a raspberry. Right? Na 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 boo boo. Okay. So 
But the biggest things that I've had, some teachers will use this to, to do a lot of air pressure. And then their students, they'll, they'll do it really heavy, like it's singing. This, this is not singing. This is just the edge of your cords touching so that you can go really high and go really low without any problems. And to really have your body feel the exact amount of pressure it needs to sing. I do not, I'm not going to say that they're wrong. They use, everybody does different things. Everybody uses different things. You can learn from everybody, okay? For my studio, I do not do that. There should be no extra pressure. It should be tiny sound. So I'm going to go really high so you can hear how tiny the sound is. It's tiny, isn't it? It's almost inaudible. Is it really tiny? No. All you need is to feel the edge of the chords, place the note properly, and use this. And then once you finally let your chords come together, do you hear how loud the sound is? You don't need a lot of weight. You should have no weight. It should feel effortless. You shouldn't feel anything in your throat or your neck at all. Yoga is your friend. Yoga is your friend. You find strength without tension. Strength without tension. OK. So that is a tongue drill. That is a lip drill. That is breath support at its best. So people always throw out, support your sound. What does that mean? Now you know what muscles are used. You know what it actually means. It's those abdominal muscles making that diaphragm get off the couch. That's what it is. So what I want you to do is I want you to go, um, let's do it. So the goal, I hear people lift off of their support. Support means you keep the motor going, you keep the contraction happening. I call it ribs out. Your ribs have to keep moving out or feel it go down and out. Or if you're one of those people that feels it knit in the middle, you got to keep that going. You can't stop it. Here we go. Keep the placement too. Some people drop it down into their mouths and they can't drop it down into your mouths because then it won't have the same effect. That's why these exercises are great. It, it handles a lot of different activities. Um, I could not lip trill. I was asked to do a lip trill in, my, in a master class with Joyce DiDonato's teacher. The first time I met her, she tried me to do it. Tried to me do it. I could not do it at all. The next year, I did another master class with her. <laughs> she made me do it. It changed my singing for life. I figured out how to do it. I made myself figure out how to do it. And it has changed my singing. Because now I can do all sorts of stuff that I wasn't able to do before because it wasn't placed properly. Yeah, the motor was going, but if it's not in the right spot, like if it's in the throat or in the back or in the mouth, it's not going to ring. It's not going to resonate. So I need to talk about resonance. What is resonance? Resonance is an open cavity, okay, of space that we put sound in to amplify the sound. So for human beings, our resonators are actually our sinus cavities. Where we inhale, we have these huge pockets that go all the way across here, and they have a big, deep opening here, as well as up here. All right? So this is really behind the nose, not in the nose. Don't ever put your sound in the nose. And the way you can tell, um, that's how you check. Never put your sound too forward, but you do want it forward. You want it right behind the front nose in the pocket. So I always say sniff and lift. Lift. Do you see that? You see how crazy my eyes look? I just, I just put my resonator down. I close my resonator. And everything lifts up and I keep it there. And that's why my talking voice is so nasal. I'm sorry, everybody, but that's why. Because I just put it in the resonator now. Because it's easier than putting it in your throat. Okay? That is what a resonator is. And that's why we aim the sound in here. Because that will enable you to go still in there it's still connected okay so you want to keep it here keep it connected and that's what this does now I want to talk about some issues that we have in singing first of all are there any questions up to this point about those things a lot of information I'm throwing at you okay biggest problems I find in voice students is they listen to themselves what they listen to themselves. Your speaker is right next to your receiver. And it, you have this thing called bone conduction. And it conducts the sound. And you hear things differently. 
people that adjust their sound to what they're hearing will have a really hard time singing and it won't sound good. It'll sound good to them and nobody else. And it's because they're listening to themselves. I mean, it's because of the bone distortion, the bone conduction, um, the distortion of the sound. So it's like you're at a rock concert. If you've ever been to a rock concert and been up to the front, right next to the subwoofer, and you're the mm, 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 but you can't hear the rest of the band, that's what I'm talking about. The people in the back of the auditorium, they can hear the whole band because they're away from the speaker. You're right next to the speaker. You're not going to hear what it really sounds like. So you have to trust. You have to trust the feel of singing. Okay? Once people start learning to feel their singing and make it, if it feels effortless, it's going to sound good. You don't need to worry about what you sound like if it feels good. If it feels good, and I'm not talking feels like that, because I know some people really like to feel muscled. Muscled is not good. I'm talking feels good as an effortless. <laughs> I don't feel anything. Yes, that's what we want. Okay? Or I'm getting endorphin rushes because my big trunk muscles are working. Yes, that's what we want. That kind of feel good. Okay? Not muscled. Um, singing too loudly. Never sing louder than lovely. Never. I don't care if it says for TC, EC, 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 mo, and the conductor's like, don't do it. Don't be a hero. Let somebody else pick up some slack. Okay? You have a whole section there. Don't. Don't do that. Just don't do that. You will never outproduce sound-wise a trombone. Their resonators are brass. We are flesh and bone. So don't try. <laughs> Just don't try. Don't try. Um, singing too softly. Never sing off of your voice. What does that mean? So, um, pianissimo. <laughs> you hear how unstable is? Just a little louder and it stabilizes. Um, so, uh, uh, let me see here. Amazing grace, amazing grace. That's off my voice. I'm pull, I literally pulled everything back. It doesn't sound good. It might sound good to you because it, it actually pulled toward my ear and so it sounds nice and yummy. And it didn't sound good, did it? It was like bad. <laughs> That's what I mean. Don't pull off your voice. Always sing on your core. So if somebody next to you is like, you're singing too, too loudly. If you know that you are singing on your core and it's literally the softest sound you can make, fine. Make a beautiful sound, not an ugly sound. OK. <laughs> on your voice. Um, effects on intonation. Intonation. Nine times out of ten, and I'm being very serious, intonation has to do with the shape on the inside of your mouth. And that means vowel shape. You have a thing, I want everybody to feel with their tongue, the hard palate, which is that bump on the inside of your mouth. Now right behind that, there's a soft squishy spot, two little soft squishy pockets, that's your soft palate. That should be lifted at all times. If you do not lift that, the sound will lose its brilliance. It will be dull and flat sounding, and it will actually be flat intonation-wise. So I would go, that's the position for singing. Now listen when I, let, when I let it go down. It's a big difference in the sound quality. I hope you can hear that. Can you guys describe it for them in case they can't hear the difference? They can hear the difference. They can hear the difference? Good? OK, good. Maybe, maybe muffled, a little bit muffled. A little muffled, and it sounded really clear to me. Interesting. Okay, cool. And the reason why when you, when you put your soft palate down, it, it shoots the sound into your ear and it makes it louder. So you don't want to let it be muffled, especially in the mid-voice. Let that sound be muffled. Okay. Um, men have different favorite vowels than women. Men love ahs and os. Women love e. Okay. Tenors, and they're a whole other breed of singer. A true tenor loves an e-vowel all day long, okay? So when you warm up, think about those things. When you're warming up and practicing at home, start on those vowels, and I think you'll have a better time getting all the other vowels in order and the, the placement. Stretch yourself. Um, issues with undeveloped voices. Um, if you only sing where you feel like you sing well, where you sing well, you will start creating a hole in your voice. You need to use your entire register and try and even it out. It's like those guys that go to the gym. I call them gym rats. And they just lift the weights that they like to lift, which is the arms. They don't do the legs. They come out and they're walking out like this. And then they've got these chicken legs, right? Just bones. 
That's what happens to your voice. And eventually what will happen is you'll put a hole in your voice. Right? 98% of all women are a soprano of some type. Period. True contraltos are usually 6'2", tall and sanguine, really willowy, and they have this really unique timbre to their voice, and their voice is very low. There is a fifth difference. That's a contralto. Then um, they hang out around, their high note is around a B, up there, okay? Um, Mezzo-sopranos, which is a second soprano, most women, <laughs> Um, well, most women are either a regular, you, you get what I'm saying, a soprano. Um, they are going to transition on an E flat or an E. Uh, and then sopranos are a third higher than that. And then there's a weird thing called a coloratura soprano. And they're usually around 410, 411, maybe five feet. They call them the squeaker toys in opera. <laughs> and they do all the crazy stuff. They will go a little higher, they'll transition on a G sharp. Okay, so your voice type actually has to do with where your voice naturally sits. Yes, your voice can change over time. When I hit the age of 28, my voice started to change. I went from being a true mezzo-soprano, right there, and now I transition here. Yeah. But I know I'm going to go back down again. What's that about? The aging voice. Your voice changes when you get older. Women, our voices go down, and that's because we lack estrogen, the hormone estrogen, as we go um, get older. Men lack testosterone, so their voice goes up, actually. Questions on that? Anyone? Okay. Um, the mouth shape, I just wanted to do one last thing about um, the most important thing besides alignment, breath support. The alignment, the breath support, the placement. Placement, we talked about placement, talked about alignment, we talked about breath support. What does it mean? how to do it. Um, the last thing you really need to talk about is uh, um, basically your mouth shape, the inside of your mouth. The inside of your mouth when you sing needs to be really narrow. We don't talk about that. People think widen up, widen up. Widening it up diffuses the sound. It makes it breathy and unfocused. Narrowing up on the inside of the mouth, and it doesn't matter what vowel you're on, narrowing makes it easier, it feels better, and it sounds better and you're actually able to do dynamics. If things are wide, you have no hope of doing any dynamics at all, ever. Narrow, almost like you're singing like this. You see my, my mouth shape is actually almost like a D. Um, your corners have to be in on all vowels. There's a thing where people do, the, when they sing, and this choir, Tampa Oratory Singers, has the best mouth shape of any choir I've ever sung with. I'm not kidding. So kudos to you. So this is for those of you who may not know but you're doing great. Just look in the mirror every now and then when you practice and make sure that your corners are in. Um, so I'm getting, I get this E for an E, E. You hear the difference in the sound quality and I'm not doing anything here. I'm just, everything's the same. Huge difference in the sound quality and that's an E vowel. This is not an E vowel. E, everything is nice and relaxed and drop. It's all on the inside. The inside's nice and narrow. The other thing that's problematic for people when it comes to mouth shape, you should have a little bit of your front teeth showing and a little bit of your bottom teeth when you sing. That is relaxed and forward. You don't want to overshape. You don't want to add tension ever when you sing. But your corners, your obicularis oris muscles, these muscles need to work. Use your lips, especially when you go higher. The higher you go, the more you use your lips, the easier it is. Now, I'm not talking in the rafters. I'm talking high towards the top of the staff. It's much easier to keep everything relaxed and forward. I hit a ceiling before I'm even there. Do you hear that? And that's merely from my mouth shape. Mouth shape. The other thing is people have been told to put an egg on the inside of their throat when they were kids. Um, and to open their mouth really wide. Your cartilages have to be able to rock forward and back, and if your jaw is coming down, it, will, it won't be able to rotate. So be careful about over-exaggerating things. Look in the mirror, make sure it looks normal when you talk, right? Like this, this is another trick that you can do. 
The space that you require to sing higher comes from here. It doesn't come from here at all. It comes from here. The extra space on the inside, the resonator's lifting, the extra space that you get from the, um, all that in the back, okay? This, for a high note, not, not that. I, we, I used to do that. And I couldn't figure out why I couldn't sing high, because this can't rotate. This cannot rotate. It's cartilages and muscle that have to go forward, and you're not allowing them to because the jaw's in the way, okay? So a lot of times is when I get new students, they have breathiness, they lack focus, et cetera. They're thinking the egg's shape in the mouth, and they're actually depressing the larynx and actually causing more harm than good. So think about just a natural way you speak is the way you should sing. The way it feels when you speak should be the way it feels when you sing, OK? Any questions on vocal technique? All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to listen to two singers. I'm going to work a little bit with them as a great treat. This is Christian. All right, come on, Liana's going to sing for us. What are you singing today? Coming up down to the blessing. Excellent. <clears throat> Sorry. Come, the fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me song, melodious sonnet, song by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it. Mount of God. Okay, so I hear a lot of extra space. First of all, you have a beautiful voice. I think I told you that last time too. Yeah, it's just a gorgeous, it's a gorgeous instrument, isn't it? It's just lovely. And she has this lovely freedom about it. What I want you to do is I want to get more focus to the sound of your voice. So that is going to require you trying something new. Okay. <laughs> and I just want to narrow the space up, especially in the back. So I want you to think duck shape. Okay. Right? So we've been told we have to have a lot of space in the back, right? This, this is what our back should be. Instead, I want you to, so th if this is the back of my head, right, and this is my teeth, mm -hmm. I want you to just do this. On the inside of your mouth, just like you would speak. So speak the words for me. Come thou fountain. Do you talk like this? No. No. So say, <laughs> come thou fountain. Come thou fountain of, of yeah. every blessing. June, my heart, June, something. Some, I'll give you the words. Okay. okay. Come, thou fount of every, every blessing. blessing. June, my heart, to sing my grace. Great. I want you to do it again for me and really feel what the words feel like. Come, thou fount of. No, I don't, I don't know anybody who talks like that. Fount. Hello. Fount. Well, actually, maybe Julia Child. <laughs> <laughs> Come. Come thou fount of every blessing. June, my heart, to sing thy praise. Grace. One of those. We can just make up the words for right now. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> God won't care. <laughs> okay. Come thou fount of every blessing. Okay. And if you see how small the space is? Maybe. Come thou fount of. You really have to feel it. You really have to feel it. Come thou fount of every blessing. Try it. Come thou fount of every blessing. To thy heart to sing thy praise. Now don't think about it. Come thou fount of. Same space. Come the fount of every blessing. Oh, you're, you're thinking about it. Don't think about the space. Keep the space the way you speak. Come the fount of every blessing. Do it again. Come the speak, 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 speak. Come the fount of every blessing. Tune thy heart to sing thy prayer. Now sing from the beginning. Come the fount of every blessing. Ah, close it down. I know it's so hard. Here's a to my heart. To the heart to put it really make it really bright okay. and ugly and like you're a seventeen year old boy. Okay. I'm serious. <laughs> I'm serious. Make it sound like that in your ear. Oh, no. Just but, but just narrow it, don't fix it, just let it be. If it makes that sound is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. If it makes that sound to you, let the sound be. Just think about narrowing it up in the back like a duck, like this. Like you speak all day long. Okay? Oh, no. 
difference? Better? Ish? How did it feel? It felt flat. It felt flat, okay. <laughs> All right. It felt wrong. It, yeah, it feels like it can't be that simple, right? <laughs> Come thou fount of every blessing to thy heart to. Try it with little space, duck mouth, all right? But uh, now I want you to sniff and lift. Now duck shape. Come thou fount, just like you speak. Think, think it's just like you speak. It's just like you speak. There it is. Much better. Much better. Yes. Do you feel how simple that is? It felt different. Did it, it sound, sound different? different? Okay, what did the sound sound like to you? Um, a little brighter. Uh huh. Fuller. Much brighter, mm -hmm. right? Like almost obnoxiously brighter. And as you go higher, it's going to sound really loud. Okay. Can we do a different key? Thank you so much, darling. Here we go. Come the fault. The same thing. Don't open up in the throat. Don't open up in the back. You don't need all that space. Come the fault. That's too open. Come the fault. You heard depressing? You're depressing your larynx because you're opening up too much. Come. Just relax it up. Swallow. Good, 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 good. Swallowing puts everything at a reset. Stop your jaw. Better, better. Does it feel strange? I don't think that was right. <laughs> well, to my heart, to... Put it a little bit more forward. Let's get a little more forward. If it doesn't feel right, then it's not right. Relax. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the back of the tongue. Relax the back of the tongue. Better. Better. Good. So what's happening is that back of the tongue has gotten in the habit of pushing down to create more space. Okay. And you just have to let it relax up. That's what I mean by that duck shape. Mm -hmm. Right now, there's this depression and this, this so wideness. That's the tongue that comes out. That's what's happening. Yeah. Because sometime in your life, somebody told you you needed all this extra space in the back mm -hmm. to sing high and to sing, right? You have to have that space. And it's programmed in us because we were told it when we were little. All right? And it's still in there. It's not your fault. You did what they told you. Check. Ten points for Gryffindor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? So I, I talk about singing as it's like a pendulum, all right? Singing is a pendulum. So this is why we have people listen to us. I'm a professional. All professionals I know that are responsible will have someone listen to them. We cannot hear what we sound like. That's why you have someone listen to you and give you feedback. That's what we do. That's my job, okay? So we will correct something, and we bring it back to where it should be. And then guess what happens? Right? And then we have someone listen to us again, we're like, oh crap, okay. Right? And that's, that's singing in general. Thank you. Singing in general. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm hearing, is I'm hearing the tongue creating more space, which depresses the larynx and makes it hard to sing. Okay. So there's a baby bear, a mama bear, and a papa bear. Baby bear is when you tighten the medial constrictors and you sound like this, and you sing like this, and it's really tight sounding, and it can cause pitch problems. <laughs> <laughs> and it makes that strident sound. <laughs> can you hear that? That's the closing off of the throat, the medial constrictor shoving the larynx out of position. It sounds really awesome, though. Like, I will tell you, in my ear, phenomenal. <laughs> Clear, loud, awesome. Seriously, this is your, your ears lie to you. Muffled, fuzzy. Baby bear. Mama bear is the medial, the, the larynx is in the medium position. Hello, I am the 1-800 operator late at night. So I'm in the middle somewhere, and you can call me for a good time, right? So this is, you hear how fuzzy the sound gets? That's a medium laryngeal position. And then there's Papa Bear. Papa Bear is very happy, he likes to hang out on the couch watching football. All right, everything's relaxed and chill. You want to be the Papa Bear position all the time with your larynx. You don't, and you don't want to be depressed. Depressed is the old man, right? <laughs> Walter. Wasn't there the guy like Jeff Dunham does the Walter guy? That's, <laughs> right? That's the depression of the larynx, and that's what's happening is the depression where it opens okay. too much, and it's from the tongue pushing down. Okay. So you just have to go, because you've got it. You, girl, you know. You're a good musician. I can hear it. And your voice is there. Your voice, you've been blessed. You have a beautiful voice. So you just have to take that and just relax it. And then it'll fling forward. It'll sound brighter to you, which maybe is a good thing or a bad thing, depending on if you like bright sounds. But it won't sound like that to us. Mm -hmm. It just sounds freer and easier. Okay. Did anybody have a comment? You had a comment? I just was... was 
you, you were talking about the duck sound, the, the, the duck shape. Mm -hmm. Where is that? Beep. In your mouth. In your mouth. In your mouth, like right here. This is my tongue. A lot of people will do this. And that causes so many problems. They'll yank their tongue back. And so the tongue, the tongue should be always touching the bottom teeth. I -o, I -o. Always. Like that. People, when they start pulling, when they start getting their tongue around or they depress it, they create too much space, the tongue yanks up and it makes it very difficult to sing. Especially high, it's so hard. And I see tenors, I see famous tenors do it all the time. And then it's funny, you'll know that one is, you know, they study at the Met. Like the, the Met broadcasts are fabulous if you ever get to watch them because they'll do a close up of the mouth. And you can see the tongue is yanked back and then they get this look in their eye like, oh my gosh, right? Because it's really hard. They do this and then they slide their tongue forward and they go, and then they hold it a little longer because they, they too, they're human beings. They're not machines. Okay. Does that make sense? Good job. Thanks. Good job. Thanks for, thanks for working with me. You. All right. Your turn. <clears throat> what are you singing today? Doing, were you there? Okay. We're just going to do the first phrase. Okay. I'm going to stand here just for time's sake. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? I want to hear that oh, well. beautiful voice. Baritone, yes? Yeah, he's a great baritone. He would be like a Figaro or somebody. Fabulous. Um, so uh, he has a fr very fresh, I'm going to call it a fresh, young sounding voice. He's placing the voice in the right places. He has a relaxed mouth, yet he's using his lips to make the sound. He's doing everything correctly. Now I want to add a little bit of the spiritual style to you, because there's nothing wrong with the voice, right? If you say so. Yeah, okay. Um, it's really clean. Uh, what I would say, because this is a spiritual, it's a little clean sounding. <coughs> it's a little cantorial sounding. Does that make sense to yeah. you? It's a little too clean. So whenever I sing a spiritual, I try and find the earthiness. I try and sing into the earth, which is the opposite of what we want to do when we do everything else. We want to lift, 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 right? Mm. Were you there? I want you to really sink into it, right? Mm. Mm. Feel the earth. Ready? <coughs> I know it's weird, right? Were you there yes. when they crossed it? it, it. Go down. My Lord. Oh, my heavy. My Lord. Heavy. The weight of the world is on you. Do it again. Were you there when they crossed it? Even every, every vowel. Every vowel. Every vowel. Go to the beginning. Do it again. Do it again. Go to the beginning. Every vowel has to have a heaviness, a weight. You have to feel it in the earth. I, Austria, I sang with the American Spiritual Ensemble. They were amazing. So, I learned from them. <laughs> you got to like literally feel, crucified, my lord. Everything down. Here we go. Were you there when they crucified, my lord? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And don't be careful of the heart. Were you Good, 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 good. Now whale. Oh, that was too clean. That was way too clean. It needs to be way messier and way more slidy and way more gross. It has to be way grosser. In your ear, it has to. Here's the thing. This is what I mean. You can't listen to yourself. You have to make it sound ugly sometimes. Allow your body to be to make the sound ugly. Oh, yes. Gross. Not what you would do for a madrigal. Okay. <laughs> All right on it. Oh. Good, good. Now you get too much energy. Now let it relax down. Do it again. Do the O oh again and let it relax down a little bit. There you go. There you go. Sometimes it causes me. Now use the M. Use the M. To tremble. Tremble. Use the M. Use the M. 
tremble. Yes! Were you there when they crucified you see him? You see him? my Bye. Lord? Yeah! <laughs> Voila, done. Say two. Okay, I'd like to open up for a few minutes. How many minutes do we have left for? Okay, for some questions. What do you think? We have told listeners that they can email questions to Ooh, you. Ooh, I love that. So if there are no questions here, if you would allow us to email questions to you and you answer them. Absolutely. BluebirdHorizon at ProtonMail.com. You talked about yoga earlier. Do you have any favorite? Rodney Lee, morning yoga. Rodney Lee. Rodney. Rodney, Rodney Lee, morning yoga. 25 minutes in the morning. Um, I used to do it, so I got into yoga because I, as a mezzo-soprano, I did a lot of trouser rolls. I was much skinnier when I was in my master's degree. Um, so I did a lot of trouser rolls. So one of the things they suggest you do is a trouser roll, a pants roll mezzo, is where a woman plays a guy um, in opera. <laughs> it's an opera thing. <laughs> Um, I had to learn how to do stage combat, and that makes you move more masculine. So I did two years of stage combat, and my, I want to call him my sensei, my fight master. Um, he goes around the room, and he tells you what you need. Um, and what I needed was meditation. <laughs> but what he made us all do in order to get present and ready to fight is we had to do yoga for 30 minutes every class before we were allowed to touch a sword. Um, and it just gets you, like I said, it helps you relax and it helps you find your inner strength. It helps you contract muscles that you should contract, and it helps you release the muscles that you shouldn't have contracted. So, like, he would be like, my, my husband and I always kid ourselves because his, his thing is soft throat, soft eyes. But it so works because you're, like, trying to hold the position, and everything is tense. And when he says soft throat, you're like, oh, my God, my neck. You know, and everything softens, but this has to remain strong, just like your abdominal muscles have to remain strong, and nothing here has, can be tense. You won't, the sound won't come out. If, if you can't sing high, you can't do all the dynamics, you can't do anything, phrasing, etc. if there's tension. So I highly recommend him, because if you get bored, you can switch to forward bends. I personally like standing positions. That helps me a lot, because I carry a lot of neck tension. And I think it just, it's just how I learned how to sing. I had to relearn how to sing. I don't know if you know that story about me. Started in theater, and then I was in musical theater, and I was a belter. Um, and I was putting a hole in my voice, and I didn't realize it. So I had to relearn how to sing completely from scratch. And my teacher, Dr. Larry Day, um, he's a Belcanto teacher. He is a, basically of the lineage of Manuel Garcia, if you're familiar who Manuel Garcia is in history. His teacher's teacher was Manuel Garcia. So I'm a Belcanto singer. And I had to relearn how to sing completely. So now when I go to musical theater and I belt, it's a completely different thing altogether. But yoga, so essential if you carry neck tension. I, I'm not kidding. So you have to use other muscles, like the, the muscles you should be using. <laughs> Does that help? Mm -hmm. Other, yes. So we've had a big layoff here and not been able to sing in groups. So mm -hmm. what happens to voices that you don't use for a long period of time? Ooh! I'm so glad. So what happens, what happens to voices that you don't use your voice over time? Because with COVID-19, we've been laid off from singing in choral music um, a lot. So what happens after three days is you start losing muscle, period. After three days of not singing, yes, people, your long cruise where you ha go to the snack bar every hour or whatever, and that's not just the only problem. Um, you you lose muscle tone after three days. So my teacher, Dr. Larry Day, he would say, you just need 10 minutes a day, people. Just vocalize for 10 minutes a day and you'll maintain your muscle tone. Now what happens if you don't do that? What happens is you get flabby. You will get a wobble in your voice. Wobbles happen from, um, people think it's age. It, 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 I will talk about the age part in a minute, maybe. But it's not the age that causes the wobble. It's flabbiness that causes the wobble. <laughs> You're out of shape, people. The breath control is not working like it should. All right? Brr, brr, shh. Whatever exercise works for you, but you need to do them to keep this working. Um, sing in the car. Sing to your favorite musical. Sing to whatever 
you know, band you like to listen to as long as it's not acid metal or something. Um, well, because then they sing differently. But even heavy, heavy metal, they'll sing, ah, 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 that's still okay. There's nothing wrong with that. They're not using their throat. They're using their sinus cavity. Um, anything, sing something. Uh, when it comes to a, the aging voice, because um, we, all, we all go through it, I talked about in the last class, I talked about, or was it this one? This one? <laughs> I'm losing my mind. Um, where we lack certain hormones and our voices will either go up or down with age. Also what happens once we start losing the hormones is our bones and our cartilage start to ossify. They start to um, get harder and more rigid, less flexible. That is really a huge reason why you need to keep singing. You just need to keep singing. Just keep singing. Um, and if you practice, if you work yourself up, you'll gain a little bit of that flexibility back. But no, as, as the aging process happens, it's harder and harder to get the flexibility back. The flexibility can cause, the, the, the non-flexible voice can cause a little bit of a wobble. But most times it's this, it's not the ossification factor the where it gets harder. The cartilages get hard. Does that help? Other questions? Yes? Could you talk about vibrato and control thereof? Vibrato and control thereof. Okay, what is vibrato? Vibrato is the natural undulation of the entire larynx. The larynx is the size of a walnut, which is basically your thumb. That's how big the, what do we call it, the Adam's apple or the voice box, those are, those are colloquial terms for that, right? Um, the larynx. And in that, you have two little ligaments that are called the vocal cords, and they snap together and they vibrate. Um, I want to focus back on your question. Your question was the vibrato, right? Yeah. So um, if, if you are an engineer or someone who's taken physics and you've studied the Bernoulli effect, it is this suction and this, this buildup of pressure and release, and it does this puffing motion, and it does this, and that is actually what lifts airplanes up into the sky. That is how we actually make sound. That's what's happening. The air is coming up. And it's building up, the cords are coming together, it builds up pressure, and it does this, and it does this, until it starts to vibrate like that. And that's every time we speak, every time we sing, the Brunelli effect is happening. It's pretty fascinating stuff. Um, so this is what's causing your vocal cords to do this. Well, there's a lot of movement going on there, folks, for this tiny little thing. You see? So it's going to move. It's natural movement. Now, our ear perceives vibrato in a range that is acceptable. Our, we're tuned somehow, miraculously, to hear when a vibrato is not right. It's not right. It's not normal. There's something wrong. When it's really like, ah, 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 right? We've all heard that. Or the, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> we've heard that. And you both know that it's breast, you all know now that it's breast support that's the issue. Or they're using the wrong muscles, okay? Shh. <laughs> that will help you. Um, <laughs> But vibrato is just, the real, everything is relaxed, functioning naturally like it's supposed to. Your, your voice box moves, and that's what causes that natural undulation. If everything is acceptable, then it will be, um, they won't, it won't sound like there's anything wrong, right? Does that make sense? For straight tone, what happens is we hold the instrument still. We absolutely grab with our exterior muscles. We call them extrinsic muscles, muscles on the outside of the larynx. Muscles on the outside of the larynx, we tighten, and we hold it in place to not move. That's what straight tone is, not moving. And that's why, like, a lot of times people will, who are choral conductors, like this fabulous woman over here, she'll program something where you're doing this fabulously finessed straight tone, and then she'll have one where everybody rips open and sings really loudly and robustly. That's because she's a good, she knows what she's doing. She's a good good programmer because she knows that there's only so much you can do straight tone for a long time before it really goes south. Does that make sense? Yeah. Did that answer your question? From a, from a choral point of view, is it better to aim for a straight tone since just by the numbers of singers? Okay, it really, okay it's all about style. For a, for a spiritual no, absolutely not. An American, an Ameri African American spiritual, you have to have a full sound, which means everything is going like crazy. You just open the throttle. Um, for pert, arvo pert, 
if you're familiar with Arvo Pärt. It's this, um, I think they're Estonian. He's Estonian. It's like Iceland, that area. Um, I think he's Estonian, but I could be wrong. Look it up. Google it. You can tell me. Send me a message. They were this, Robin. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Um, they do a lot of gorgeous layering of straight tone. Um, and it creates this pastel wash of color and it's sound. So it's beautiful. So there's a time for it. It depends on the composer and it depends on the work. One of the biggest things that, because I've studied in Oxford for two summers, um, I've sung with, a, I was the only American there. So they were all from um, Cambridge and they were all from Guild Hall, which is their version of Juilliard. I don't know if you're familiar with Guild Hall or Juilliard, but um, um, and the, the, the National Conservatory, those people. Um, and all of them were choral singers. And when they would sing in choir, not one of them would straight tone for an English piece that we in America would straight tone on. Not one of them. But because they're all singing with the same technique and everybody's open, it sounds like one voice. So on the recordings, it sounds like this amazing straight tone, but it's not. You saw she wasn't straight toning. She was singing with pressure in her face, and it sounded like straight toned us. So a lot of people have this misconception that, oh, it's British music. It has to be straight toned. Be careful, <laughs> because we're listening to recordings and not the reality of the situation. Um, it, they're, all, they're all taught really, really well in England, so they're very fortunate to have really good teachers. So they sing freely as a unit though. That's, that's the difference. So a choral conductor may ask you to do straight tone because it's appropriate. And in America we have a little different style than British. So we may like to have our Britain with more straight tone than they do. There's nothing wrong with that. I feel like it's art. And the artist is right here. I mean really. I, I've sung with um, True Conquer, um, a bunch of professional choirs, so I do that as well. I don't just sing as a soloist or an opera singer. I do everything, so if that helps. <laughs> Any other questions? Questions about me? Questions I just about want to say thank you. My pleasure. You are wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been great fun and very educational, very helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, and it's great to see you this way and hopefully in the future very soon. Bye. <laughs>